This video is sponsored by Bombas. Bombas socks. So we really enjoy being sponsored by Bombas. They've got some great socks, everything from crew to quarter, all the sizes you want. There's merino wool in it. And they are one of those companies that does good for other people. So when you buy a pair, they give a pair to someone in need. And the greatest thing is you can right now get 20% off your first order by using the code BITR20. Yeah, so go do something good, get yourself a fresh pair of socks, and celebrate the holidays. Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And this is the most exciting video of the year. This is dun, the. Dun, dun. Yeah, good. Do you have a drum roll? Best in gear awards. <laughs> I'll try that one again. All right, ready? So this is the most exciting video for us during the year. All year we're thinking about this. Every shoe we put on, we're like, is this shoe gonna be the shoe of the year? And we're talking about the best in gear for road shoes, and we're gonna cover all the bases. We got Megan here right now. We're gonna have Robbie jump in. We're even gonna have Widefoot Jarrett come in to give a little bit of insight on what makes the best shoe of the year. So we have different categories. We've got race day, daily trainer, recovery, all sorts, which we'll cover today. And we go through, we sit down and we decide overall as a team, what are our favorites of the year? Some of the things that we consider are just how enjoyable the shoe is to run in, so feel. And then we've got price that comes in there and style. So it's pretty much a mix of those three things that really determine how we feel about a shoe and how we pick the best shoe of the year. And when we say best shoe of the year, it means it came out in this year. So 2022. So we might have a shoe we still love from 2021, but it's not going to be in this list. Right. So we're going to go right into race day, which we love. This is the sexiest category. This is the plates, the foams, the premier, the top of the line, the best of what the industry has to offer. So on this one, we're going to start with the runner up. Meg and I had two different opinions on this one. The team was pretty much split on this one. Robbie and I were leaning towards one and you and Brandon, and Brandon were leaning towards another. What's your runner up for best race day shoe? All right, runner up for me is the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus. You gotta have the plus in there. Yeah, so plus is the new version that came out this year. Um, they added a little bit more foam. It got a little softer, I think. You got more of that bounce that I love, responsiveness. It's always super light, which continued here. And it's just a real fun shoe. It was really hard to get down to my runner up because there is such a narrow margin between these shoes. But I went with the Adidas Pro. So this is the Adidas Pro 3. I really love the way the light stripe works in this shoe. It just feels really nice underfoot. The extreme toe off was something that I really like because I kind of land a little bit more midfoot to forefoot. So having that transition that makes it feel fast and snappy is where this one really won me over. Some of the things that kept it from being my top shoe of the year, it's really hard to lace. So like getting the fit, once you got it in, it was fine, but getting a good fit in it was challenging sometimes. Also maybe a little unstable. Yeah, a pretty little high. Bit. Yeah, pretty high, but it, it worked out well. What is our number one pick for speed day this year. The Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Even though it came in Barbie colors, I love this year. I, I'm down with the Barbie colors. The mermaid look, the sparkle, I'm here for it. Uh, what they did with this update is they widened the platform a bit, you got more stack, and they softened up this foam a little bit, which I absolutely love. So it's really bouncy, it's responsive. This upper is very minimal. It's your it's your race day shoe. This shoe, what I really liked about it was it is much more cushion friendly than the original Endorphin Pro Series 1 and 2. But what I do like is this upper is reminiscent of the Pro Plus. It's really light and airy, pretty minimal. It, it just breathes, it fit well. The heel counter fit well. There was no heel lift, no issues with fit. It probably has one of the best fitting collars of any of the speed shoes and then you add in that soft power run pb in this that still had a snappy feel and the plate still pops when you run on it tons of grip on the bottom this was just a really nice shoe i'd put it up against the vaporfly any day of the week here it is race day shoe of the year so now we're going into max cushion. Meg, is this your favorite category? Favorite category. Yeah. I know we can talk about super shoes and race day shoes, and those are like where everything's packed in, but I think for you, 
comfort on most of your runs is the most important. Yeah, because think about it. When you're out there running on most days, you're not racing. You're not trying to run real fast. So those plush, lovely Max Cushion shoes are where it's at. Runner up is the Adidas Adi Zero Prime X Strung. And this was pretty much unanimous between us yeah. as a favorite shoe. I was surprised because the version before this, the upper didn't fit me right. I felt it wasn't stable. I spent a lot of time trying to make sure I was landing properly on the platform and not just enjoying a nice smooth cushion ride. This one also kind of transcends the Max Cush and recovery shoe because it does go fast enough that some people are going to use it for race. As a matter of fact, I did use it for a race this year. I use it for long runs. I just thought it's such a fun shoe. If you're hitting it right, it just bounces along. And I, I just, I love this shoe. Yeah, so it is, I guess, a faster of the Max Cushion shoes, but you have almost 50 millimeters of stack in the back here. And it, while it does have the uh, Light Strike Pro and also the Energy Rods, it's really cushy and fun to run in. And it's just like we're talking about, it's fun. Like on those days where you just are going out for an easy run, like this is a fun shoe to lace up. So this one was also a pick that both of us agree on. This is the Max Cush shoe of the year. And again, the more comes back. I think we named the more V3 last year. Yeah. This is the V4. What's different about it? Oh, it's got more stack. It's got a wider platform. It's a little bit softer, which you're noticing throughout this video, that's a trend that we're seeing among lots of shoes is a little softer, a little bouncier, and a little more stack, which I'm all about. Even though it's a really nice shoe, the upper is nice, it's got a trash tongue. I found it every once in a while, I did have to adjust the tongue back. Also, I went down a half size in this, and when we got the New York colorway, I went from a 10 and a half to a 10. It made a huge difference. The shoe just felt so much better, like aligned with the midsole a little better for me. I'm not saying that you need to size down, but you may wanna try a half size down if you're normally like, I am a 10 and a half, go down, try a 10. Because once I did, it just felt dreamy. I think that we're categorizing this as the top Max Cushion because it really is what I think of when I think of Max Cushion. It's plush, it's soft, it's perfect for recovery days. Like Thomas said, it's really fun to wear it for casually. And if you are, I recommend this New York City colorway. Very, very stylish. But yeah, it's just that really cushy, comfortable, plush Max Cushion shoe that you want. This shoe pretty much sets the standard for me for what a soft, cushy, recovery day, comfort running shoe. If you wanna feel just like you're cruising through your miles, bouncing along, this shoe does it. So another category that we're gonna hit off this year, we don't even have a runner up for this one. We're just gonna go straight in to what we think is the most innovative shoe of the year with new tech that we haven't seen before. And May, what is it? It is the New Balance SC Trainer. Yeah, and I have to admit, when we first got this shoe, I didn't quite understand it. It is a little heavy. It's a little max cush. It's got a plate. I'm like, is it a race day shoe? It's called the trainer, but they were saying that possibly it would be for people to race in. When I really kind of fell in love with the shoes, when I just accepted what it was for my running, which was easy day, recovery runs. It almost falls into that max cush category. It is a high stack, but really why we're talking about this as innovative would be this energy arc that we see here. So what they've done is they've cut out a lot of the foam here, which not only lightens it up a little bit, but it also helps with this give on landing. So it sort of spreads out a little bit when you land and also paired with this uh, plate, Carbon get, plate. The carbon plate, you get a really nice bounce back. While the shoe's a little heavy, the energy return kind of makes up for it. So we found this to be like really versatile shoe. Like as far as daily miles, you could pick it up a little bit in the tempo. It wouldn't be my first choice, but this is one of those shoes that I was going to say to someone, you know, you just need like one, one shoe to yeah. do most of your training this one could get you there. Yeah, I think it's great for long runs. Um, and also it helps with that recovery piece because you have the plate and this extra cushioning. And like Thomas was saying, you can pick it up a little bit if you want to, but I think what's perfect about this is using it as a trainer and then switching into your light race day shoe. It really works well with the SC Elite 3. So you go from this shoe that's a little bit on the heavier side and you drop it down to race day and you have a light, bouncy version of this that's ready to roll. Between this and the number one shoe, which I won't spoil, of the year, these probably had the second most amount of miles for me 
in 2022. Most disappointing! We are getting to a category that is very sad, and but it serves a purpose. We don't want you to make the mistakes that we've had to live through. Some of you will disagree with us, and that's fine too. I know that our top pick for most disappointing shoe is probably gonna get us a lot of flack. Ooh, we're here to be honest, so. We're, yeah, we're gonna start with the runner up. Boom, Hoka Kiwana. It looks so cool, we we're like, oh, it's gonna have that nice cushioning, it had a nice looking upper, this unique little nubbin on the thing. We were really excited to get this one. We saw it at the running event last year, and we are like, oh, I can't wait to get that Kiwana. They sent it, and I was like, this thing's a brick. Yeah, the cushioning underfoot was lacking, to say uh, the least. It's not what you want from Hoka. When we talked to them, they were like, well, it's more of a gym shoe than a running shoe. And they kind of pedaled backwards on this one, because I think they knew that they had a dud on their hands. We actually got asked to send ours back, because they thought, well, maybe it's just a manufacturing problem. So we sent ours back, and they sent us another pair, and Still a brick. The most disappointing shoe of the year. And I think this was most disappointing because we were so excited about it. It's a follow up to one of our favorite shoes. And then we were seeing images and we we're like, it looks amazing. It looks like it's gonna hit. Can't wait to get it on our feet. This is gonna be it. Every day, wanna run in it. Oh my God. And then we got this, <laughs> Alpha Fly 2. The one thing I can say is the upper is really nice. I really like the upper. It's okay. Yeah, the atom knit that they use on this is spectacular. I hope that continues on future models. But like this, is, the Zoom X got firm. So here's what happened. They tried to make a race day shoe for the masses. And this is what they got. A shoe that doesn't work for me. Well, <laughs> or... I think what it was, was the original Alpha Fly, it worked for some people. For other people, it didn't work. Some people complained it wasn't stable. They said it was hard to corner in. It just needed some adjustments they widen the base they made the heel a little firmer so it's not like before you walk around on it and you were worried you're gonna fall over yeah but when you're running in it and you're running in it properly it sings and you popped off the air pods and it just was a magical feeling this one while the shoe got heavier you don't feel the air pods as much underneath your foot you yeah. don't get that spring the whole thing i love about the original alpha fly is later miles in the race you can kind of lean forward and get that feedback from the front of the shoe to pop you off where this one just feels dead like i kept trying it and i took it back out after we did our review i was like maybe i got it wrong maybe i wasn't running it i took it out for another speed work and i was like i don't like this shoe yeah I mean, Thomas pretty much said it all, but to sum it up, the heel caused some rubbing, it got heavier, it got wider, and it really just lost the magic. A lot of people are on a budget, Meg, and we have some shoes that came out that, you know, were decently priced. And when we say decently priced, right around a hundred bucks. You can probably get cheaper if you go to the big box store and you get some of their big box running shoes. But as far as shoes that are meant for serious runners performance performance there aren't a ton of choices around a hundred dollars we tried a few and our favorite was the Saucony axon 2. this shoe was kind of confusing for me because i didn't understand why i liked it because normally i like something a little bit softer uh, it's kind of one of those shoes where it it kind of lightens up and softens up a little bit out on the run it is though on the firmer side so if you are looking for that max cushion soft that we've talked about like in the more before you're not going to get it here but it is like a quality daily trainer that's nice for maybe some of those quicker miles this shoe has that feel and kind of the budget side of it so it's got that speed roll feel through uh -huh. it so you get that nice roll through the uh midsole there and it kind of feels like the baby brother to the shift. I just really like the way it rolls through the stride. So the Axon 2 at $100, I feel is a pretty good bargain because you get some of that technology in this shoe. It's gonna be durable, it's gonna hold up. And I mean, it really does have a lot of the same uh, qualities as your $160, $180 shoe. You've got a nice gusseted tongue here that's lightly padded, plenty of cushioning around the collar and heel. And like Tom was just saying, this foam and all this rubber on the outsole, it's gonna last you a long time. All right, thank you for watching part one. Stay tuned for part two of the best shoes of 2022. Yeah, we'll bring Robbie out for that and maybe Jared. So it'll be a lot of fun. So in the meantime, the best way to stay in touch with this channel is to subscribe to our email. You get a weekly email that lists out all our reviews, written, video. You get highlights from our podcast that week. You get, uh, 
is, I mean, even Featherston Nutrition every once in a while. So it's a great way to see what we're up to, follow what events we're going to, see what videos, see what content, you get it. Sign up for the email. Also, Meg, just sign up for Instagram, right? Well, you probably already have an Instagram. You don't need to sign up, but follow us there. We also have a Facebook group. We are on Facebook page. Strava. We've got Strava. We've got a group there. We'll give you kudos. Follow us everywhere. Yeah. All right. Stick around for part two. So, Meg, that leaves our top pick. And again, unanimous for us. Is that unanimous? You keep saying it. It sounds like a word. It's got to be now. Um, what? Am I saying it? You're unanimous. Okay, it is a word. <laughs> All right. I forgot the heel made me bleed. Um, <laughs> there's blood on my shoe. Um, <clears throat> I'm dying. <laughs> okay. That's got to go on my take. <laughs> What what'd you just choke on? Did you fly? You got a fly in there? <laughs> Brandon's dying. You know what happened? Nike just gassed us. There's room. They shot gas in. Because that's how powerful they are. Do not mess with Nike. <laughs>